Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be giving you my top five tips that can help you to improve your videos. These videos can be for the web or just for personal use. YouTube has really grown in the last few years and the demand for high quality web content from creators has only increased. If you're a web video producer, then it's probably worth your while to produce your video to the highest quality possible given the limitations of your gear. Here are five tips that I've come up with that I strongly believe can go a long way in terms of improving the overall production value of your videos. Number one on my list is make sure you use an ND filter in bright sunlight. ND filters are like sunglasses for your camera. When it's really bright, it may be difficult for your camera to correctly expose your shot without ridiculously fast shutter speeds that will result in you breaking the 180 degree shutter angle rule, which we'll discuss later. ND filters also allow you to use wide apertures in bright sunlight, which allow you to get a shallower depth of field where your subject is in focus and the background is satisfyingly blurred. Second tip is make sure you take advantage of flat or even log gamma picture profiles where possible. Flat picture profiles allow you to preserve more dynamic range in your image and they give you more creative freedom in post with color grading. Now I will admit that shooting in a flat image profile won't automatically make your image better because you still have a lot to do in terms of color grading. However, the recorded footage is already better than shooting in a standard contrasty profile because you have more detail in shadows and highlights to work with. To get a flat image, all you have to do is lower your saturation, contrast and sharpness in your standard picture profile. This should be possible to do in your video settings menu. And if your camera has log gamma profiles, then use them as much as you can with the exception of very poorly lit situations where the image falls apart. Also keep in mind that the color grading process can be more time consuming and complicated. Third, we have the 180 degree shutter angle rule we spoke of earlier. Basically, the rule is that if you're shooting video, you want your shutter speed to be the reciprocal of double your frame rate. What does this do or mean, you might be wondering? Well, it turns out that the motion blur we get from video when the 180 degree rule is maintained is one we've largely gotten accustomed to on television and in cinema. Take a look at these two scenes. On the left, we are shooting at a very high shutter speed and therefore ignoring the 180 degree shutter angle rule. On the right, we have the same scene with the 180 degree rule obeyed. You can easily see that the motion in the image on the left is strangely smooth or smeared and can become uncomfortable to watch. Fourth on my list is using an external microphone. Audio coming out of your camera is pretty much horrible majority of the time. It is therefore worthwhile to spend some time to figure out an external audio recording solution that will improve your audio quality. I've made a video series in the past about audio and video and how to get the best audio for your setup. If you haven't already checked that out, then make sure you do. For those of you that don't want to do that, then simply put, you want an external microphone of some sort. If your camera has an audio input, then you're in luck because there are many inexpensive options with great audio quality. And if your camera doesn't have a 3.5 mm audio input, then you can always use a clip-on lapel mic connected to your smartphone for superior audio quality. The audio in this video is being recorded with a lapel mic into my iPod Touch. I'll leave a link in the description below. My fifth and final tip is do not shoot in any of the automatic modes that your camera might try to lure you into. Different cameras have minds of their own and you might find that putting your camera into auto mode can sometimes result in poor video quality. In low light, your camera will not obey the 180 degree rule. Instead, it will try to lower the shutter speed and raise your ISO, both of which negatively impact your image quality. A slow shutter speed will make motion jerky and a high ISO will cause noise and unwanted grain. Another issue is that if the lighting in the scene changes quickly, then your camera will try to compensate for that with a visual exposure transition that isn't very pleasing to the eye. You want to avoid that completely. Those are just two examples, but I guess the lesson here is that you cannot and should not always expect consistent results from auto mode because you simply won't get them. Rather shoot manual and take full control of your video quality. So there you have it folks, those are my top 5 tips that I believe can go a long way in terms of improving the production value of your videos. I urge you to always keep in mind that ultimately what's most important is the content that is being presented. A good quality video with poor content will never make it far. However, if your production value is of high quality, then that leaves you with only one other thing to focus on, which is the content. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as turn on notifications for more videos like this. Catch you folks in the next one.